What's up guys? Just coming out in the shop, doing a little cleaning. Seems like I say that every single time I'm out here, but it actually happens. Well, I think I'm going to do a series on super strats. I have quite a little collection, not a massive collection, but I own some. Maybe a half dozen or so. So, we want to... Uh, get into it I guess we will now if you guys are willing and able I'm gonna walk you through some of the super strats during the 80s the hairband era all that stuff that's kind of where they they uh, surface mostly I grew up in that era playing guitar and you know when Eddie Van Halen hit super strats became a thing he really changed the way guitars are built and played. I think he was a one of the biggest innovators in in guitar playing myself. I mean, I'm not just an Eddie geek. I loved his playing. I he was I was a super fan of his growing up. I can't do all that stuff, but I really enjoyed listening to it and his talent was amazing. Nobody sounded like Ed. Nobody ever will. So, but anyways, it seemed like super strats were a big deal, you know, and they were everywhere. In the 80s, nobody really wanted Les Pauls and the Fender stuff was kind of sketchy. Uh, let's say in the late 70s, probably more than the 80s. The 80s, it started to sort of come back in the late 80s with both companies, but in the 70s, most guys don't really care for the 70s stuff, so... There's some gems out there, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's just kind of, they've got a bad rap. Both companies, major companies like Gibson and Fender. But, so, in the late 80s, uh, a guy named Wayne Charvel of Charvel Jackson Guitars worked for Gibson briefly and did some prototyping, made some guitars, and the one I'm about to show you, I believe, is a prototype. And it's very rare. Gibson seems to, like, think of it as a black eye because it's a Gibson with a Strat body. I mean, we all know what that is. They didn't want to copy each other, and they had lawsuit guitars that went on in the 70s. It was a big deal. But these snuck out of the factory... And the one I have is really rare, and it's a showcase edition. So enough of me gabbing. Let's take a look at it. We're going to do a big deep dive on it. I'll show you what it is. We'll put it on the bench. We'll play it. The whole 40 chord, guys. Okay, here we go. Okay, guys. There's the case. It even looks like a Fender case, right? Nice case though. Pretty rare in itself. Here we go. That is a Gibson U2 showcase edition. And this is the ink pen sign certificate that came with it. It says, this guitar is one of only 200 showcase edition guitars manufactured in the year 1988. There are nine models. You have one of 200. You two. There's the serial number. I don't know who signed it, but that came with the guitar. Now, I tried doing some research on it, and... From what they told me, in the nine different models, they didn't really have a set number of each batch that were made in the nine different models. I don't know if there was only 200 total, nine different models. I really couldn't even get any deeper than that. If anybody knows, I'd love to, love to hear about it. Uh, 
So anyways, let's get this on the bench and take a, a nicer peek at it. And uh, then we'll plug it in and I'll show you what it sounds like. Okay, we're on the bench, guys. And this is what we got. These are Bill Lawrence hot rails. Two rails in each, uh, each one of these singles. And you got the humbucker. They're on and off toggles. It's just on, off, on, off for each pickup. And you can snap them, you know, you can have this one on and then snap that one in. And there's also a coil tap on this. It's not a splitter, it's a coil tap. There is a difference. A splitter splits them in half, so it's like two of these hooked together, and you're able to split them in half within the, the actual pickup uh, casing, right? Well, a coil tap, they wind the coil maybe halfway and then run a lead off that and then keep, then wind the rest, so... When you tap off, it's tapping half of it, not splitting it. And that's the difference. So anyways, it's pretty basic on-off, right? And it's got a... Uh, it says... I think this is Kayla. It says Gibson on it, but I think it was Kayla. I can't read that through the camera. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. I think I have it blocked off. I do. Uh, I ain't playing whammy bar music right now. So I do keep usually keep one of my super strats set up and locked down with a lock and nut. It's got an ebony board. Nice frets in it. It's got the Explorer style headstock. Gibson logo. I'm going to flip it over. There's the Showcase Edition sticker on the back of the headstock. Gibson tuners. Um, now, it's painted. It's a silver gray color. Now, why I think this is a prototype, this is going to be a little tricky to see, but... You can see the waves in the finish, like up and down. And you can see them here too. You can feel it. It feels like a washboard. So I don't know if this was done in haste. This whole belly cut, you can see them right there. You can feel those like up and down as you rub your finger over it. Another thing, the neck joint, well, it's there. You can see the seam and the ghost lines coming out in that now. Uh, the other thing, this guitar has been hardly played in its life. Look at the lacquer checking. And it runs lengthways on the guitar, unlike most Les Pauls and Gibsons will do that thing. And just over time, it has, uh, you know, checked the finish. The front's all checked. Like I said, it's tricky to get this in the shot, but there you go. You can kind of see it. It's like all over the guitar. It is kind of hard to see it from a few feet away, but, you know, like I said, this guitar has been played very little in its life. It's a little dusty, but we're going to take care of that. And the I just played it for a second. The action's really low still and plays like crazy, crazy nice. You know, if it is a prototype, whatever. It doesn't really matter. I mean, you know, there are some imperfections in the finish and the body. And we all know Gibson's lacquer does this over time anyway, so... But you can see why 
Gibson might have been a little embarrassed about this. You know, this is a Stratocaster body. And Fender and Gibson seem to, like, respect each other's space because they were getting ripped off by the Japanese builders and anyone that wanted to back in the day. So it was... uh it wasn't really produced in large numbers for that reason. It's a cool guitar nonetheless. And I'm going to start playing it more. It really does sound nice. It's really unique. It's got a nice neck profile. And, it, and like I said, it plays really good. A lot of different ways to combinate sounds with it, which is kind of neat too. And uh, I'm going to show you another guitar before I plug this in. That's a 1986 Chavel Model 4. And you're going to see Wayne Chavel's hand in building this Gibson when he was there. Because I'm going to show you a guitar that was two years prior to this, made by Ch Wayne Chavel. And you're going to see all this stuff is really similar. All right, let's check that one out and then we'll plug this one in. Okay, this is a 1986 Chavel Model 4. Look at the toggle setup. The only difference is, is this has a tone blend circuit, which you can like roll it off and everything sounds sort of thin and single coil like, and when you roll it in, it gets almost humbuckerish in tone, a lot thicker and darker. I got to get a new uh, potentiometer for this. It has a little circuit board on it. And these are active pickups. And they actually say Jackson on them too. This is a... Uh, this was like a purplish color. It's really faded into its own kind of wine color now. It's really cool though. It looks black from a distance, but... Nice neck, really thin neck profile. It's it's wide this way, but it's really thin this way. That was a trend in the 80s, too. Not an exact duplicate of the Explorer headstock, but obviously the Kramer, you know, Jackson, Chavel, everybody was doing it back then. Which turns out that's one of the only things that really matters nowadays from what I understand is the headshot headstock shape has to be different if you're going to build a guitar you can make a strap body but the headstock needs to be a different shape than a fender or a chavel or what have you so the story goes I don't know the rules change but anyhow you can see a lot of similarities and this guitar and the U2. Uh, we'll, we're going to do a little deep dive on this one too. This has a Kaler Flyer lock and nut system, right? It's got the lock and system, but Kaler Flyer and it's got the roller saddles and your fine tuners are down here. I don't care for these. A lot of guys didn't. It's just what it is, but. Okay, guys, we're going to do another another dive on this one sometime, but let's listen to that Gibson U2 Showcase Edition. We'll see what that's all about. Okay, guys, here we are. Gibson U2 Showcase. So, when the switch is flipped down, that, that turns the pickup on. So, right now, I have these turned off. I have this one on, which is this pickup. Really nice, big, thick sound on them. All right, now let's shut that one off and turn the next one on. sound in there I think I almost think that's both pickups on 
So maybe I was wrong. I think I am, because I can hear both of them on, and it definitely got louder, so. I mean, that's really... Okay, let's turn the middle one on. A little more spanky, kind of glassy sounding. More like telly kind of tones. Kind of like that. Now this should be the bucker. Yeah. Pretty dark. Now let's coil tap it. Notice the volume really stays about the same with the coil tap, but it thins it down and you get a more of a single single coil tone like that. The volume's not really depleted a lot though, which is really nice. A lot of cool sounds, a lot of different you, I mean, you can really get some big, beefy, beefy st stuff with us, you know. Yeah, it's a really neat, neat guitar, guys. There's not many of them in existence, supposedly. A lot of guys don't like them. I don't think Gibson did. I really like this guitar. It's got a just a great feel to it. And some really nice sound. It's really comfortable. I think I need to be playing it some more, actually. You know? It's got a lot of back to it, so. Well, thanks for watching, guys. This is going to be the first in the series of Super Strats. And maybe at the end, when I finish the series up, I'll just do a a good video with every one of them and we'll shoot them out one right behind the other you know plugged into a better amp okay guys thanks for checking it out like and subscribe if you if you feel the need and help me out i'm working hard to try to keep videos going for you guys every day if i can every other day if possible i've been busy lately the sun just come out here in maine finally we had two weeks of rain, and then the sun came out, and the grass almost tipped my lawnmower over. So I almost had to weight it down on one side, but I finally went and got some gas and, and mowed it. That is what it is. Hope you guys are doing good. We'll get another one out tomorrow. We're going to go over, uh, I don't know, I'm going to pick something out good tomorrow and uh like i said at the end we'll do a big shootout on them all all right guys thanks for checking it out have a good afternoon or evening